This is a Thorium Energy Alliance Technology Talk from the inaugural Future of Energy Conference, October 2009. To find out more about Thorium Energy, please visit thoriumenergyalliance.com. This talk is from James Kennedy of Wings Enterprises, whose topic is Critical and Strategic Failures in Rare Earth Resources. But um, uh, rare earths represent um, a group of elements that, uh, when, uh, when combined with other materials, uh, have uh, some very unique characteristics. Um, in fact, uh, for a lot of applications in defense and in energy and green technologies, uh, the, uh, the rare earths are the only known bridge to the next level of, of, of performance. Okay, uh, what are these things used for? Um, a few things you might be interested here. Um, uh, here's the, uh, the rare earths down here, and I've included thorium. If you look at uh, you know, the question of whether they're rare or not, it's kind of silly. Um, this chart, basically, the further you go this way, the heavier you go, and the further you go this way down, the more rare these materials are. And you've got the lanthanide series over here with you know, some of the other um, platinum groups, et cetera, over here. Um, what are they used for? The applications, uh, uh, just on the defense side, um, you know, uh, we'll go into some of these in more detail. Well, let me see if I can. Up, oh, yeah, got the wrong guy up here. I'm just sure we're technologically on seven. What do I do here? Okay. This right here, these are these are considered the rarest uh, elements on Earth, and they're all in parts per billion. Um, and so you have uh, tellurium, uh, you have uh, osmonium, you have gold, uh, the platinum group, iridium. Uh, all of these obviously have tremendous uh, applications for defense. Um, but, uh, and then the rare earths sit above them. Their weights are very high, and they're a little bit more common. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain. Jim's really the guy to do this, but the layman's explanation is, you know, generally speaking, uh, um, you, you don't, rare earths might be widely disseminated, but they're certainly not uh, disseminated uh, very evenly in mineable, recoverable quantities. So, so when you find uh, commercially recoverable quantities of rare earths, uh, if you look at it just that way, they are in fact very rare. Um, uh, you know, uh, th this this slideshow is got uh, is intended for two different groups: people on the defense side and people on the, the green energy side. These are some of the things that uh, are also 100% rare earth dependent. These massive 5, 10 megawatt uh, um, uh, wind turbines. Uh, that's the battery pack for the Prius. Uh, you know, the Volt requires it. Uh, cerium lanthanum are catalyst crackers for the existing petroleum industry. Department of Energy is going to mandate a bunch of things around uh, uh, high efficiency lighting. Uh, high efficiency lighting is, for our, all practical purposes, very, very rare earth dependent. Um, you know, and here's just a, um, this is true for a hybrid car and then also for regular cars. Um, uh, the number of rare earth oriented equipment, small electric motors, speakers, uh, you know, your glass, the diesel fuel, uh, they're everywhere basically. Um, so, uh, with no known substitutions, um, these, uh, these, these uh, materials have very unique chemical, magnetic, electrical, luminescent, and radioactive shielding characteristics. Uh, combined with other materials, uh, not only can you make that, uh, that, uh, that engineering leap to a higher level of performance, some of these uh, materials can actually cause a change in form or function of the base material under changing characteristics. It becomes pretty important. Military applications. Uh, Pretty much uh, everything in the first strike category. Um, uh, every single, you know, uh, uh, smart ordnance and then guided missile uh, depend on rare earth uh, magnets for, for guidance. Uh, communications, uh, advanced jet aircraft, anything doing, let's say, Mach 2. Uh, um, it's even involved in, in, in stealth technology. So I'm probably pointing out the obvious to you guys, but um, it's pretty important stuff. Uh, where do you go next? Uh, this is uh, something that uh, is quite surprising. Uh, metallurgy and alloy, alloy science related to rare earths is actually very new. Um, commercially available alloys are, are something that came into the mix in, let's say, the 80s. So I'm talking about uh, a set of uh, materials that have very unique uh, um, characteristics that, that can change form and function. And uh, the science around them is, 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 is only a few decades old. It's, it's, it's actually new. So. In the short life that these materials have had on the, uh, uh, to be uh, put into applications, military and commercial, uh, I, I would say it's fair uh, to assume that uh, 
um, uh, it's, it's literally brand new and, and that, that, that nobody's even come to uh, realize the, the ultimate applications. It, it's, it's very new. Uh, for the military, basically, um, all of the advances in sonar, I think, are going to come from this. Uh, the uh, DARPA uh, um, uh, uh, structurally amorphous metals program, uh, you can see in the literature, rare earths are used pretty heavily. Uh, advances in depth propulsion airframes and, and also in, in carbon applications. Uh, green technology, same thing. Uh, they're all over the place. Everything that uh, we want to do as a country, right? Uh, we want to be the smart guys producing green products. Uh, you know, we want to lead the world in all these green technology. Uh, there's a serious problem. Uh, we're not in a position to do it. Uh, things like high-speed rail. Uh, if we wanted to do that, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, another rare earth-dependent uh, technology. Uh, what's the future here? Um, magnetic refrigeration, I, I, I think, I don't know if anybody's excited about this, but uh, uh, the amount of energy the planet uses for cooling is amazing. And uh, the opportunities for rare earth uh, magnet refrigeration, and by the way, heating too, uh, uh, could reduce total global consumption as much as 15%. Uh, one that's dear to everybody here. I'm not an expert on it. This is the best that novice can do. Thorium-based uh, nuclear energy, okay? Um, and uh, I won't repeat all this because you guys know it. Uh, commercial applications. Um, everything you use, everybody in here has got something with rare earth in it. An iPod, a, a cell phone, um, you know, superconductors. Uh, there's a whole new science of sublight speed, uh, computer processing, all rare earth dependent. Uh, future applications. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to move kind of quickly. I've got uh, something coming up. Um, anyway, uh, look, this is... Where the U.S. economy is, what kind of economy? It's a mature economy with, with high legal cost, high labor cost, high uh, environmental cost. Um, and, and what do rare earths represent? They represent all of the future industries that are, that are high value added, high pay, uh, and tie into the advantages associated with a, a modern economy and, and inefficiencies. Um, and uh, unfortunately, as it stands today, we're not a participant. Um, what is a... Uh, What's the government NGO assessment of rare earths? Uh, the National Ma Materials Advisory Board has classified rare earths as strategic and critical to our defense and, uh, and industry. Uh, National Academy of Science uh, determined that they were critical for, for our industrial needs. And the U.S. Geological Survey has listed rare earth oxides as one of 19 minerals that the United States is 100% import dependent upon. So we're talking about resource failure. Um, the United States and the rest of the world are dependent on China, who produces between 90 and 99 percent of rare earths, the 15 uh, um, uh, rare earth uh, lanthanides, and they actually control them, uh, 90 percent for the low value stuff to 99 percent for the very, very high value uh, stuff with the highest value applications. Um, published global production and consumption uh, by by all estimates, if no uh, new production comes online, uh, China by itself and Asia collectively can easily consume 100% of all rare earths uh, produced. Um, many of today and tomorrow's jobs are, are, are going to be dependent on this technology. So what's the scope of the defense side of this? Well, let's be practical, right? Uh, the United States military is 100% import dependent on, on rare earth magnets uh, for all of these different uh, systems, uh, for communications, and um, some, for some of these materials, 99% of it comes from China. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about China. Uh, as I said at lunch, I kind of wish my government was thinking this far ahead uh, in, in a resource way, but uh, we've been outmaneuvered by the Chinese, and they've done a great job. So I'm not criticizing them at all. 